goes straight into business. And Stephen is joining us here on set. Stephen, you'll be looking at some of the uh, background of this apparent deal to avoid a shutdown in the US for us, haven't you? That's right. Democrats and Republicans in the House of Representatives said to have reached a tentative agreement on border security spending worth around $1.4 billion. That's far less than the $5.7 billion that President Trump wanted to build his border wall. Funding the wall has been at the heart of this budget dispute. The interim deal funding the US government set to run out by Friday. Congress and the president would need to approve any agreement before then. Let's remind ourselves, though, of the context of this. Before any additional spending is agreed, the federal budget deficit is projected to reach $900 billion this year. That's the highest since 2012. At the same time, the US economy estimated to have taken an $11 billion hit from that 35-day shutdown. Lawmakers, of course, will be trying to avoid a repeat of that. Is it affecting the markets as yet? We've got some optimism that that deal might be passed by the end of the week in time to avoid another shutdown. European markets opening today in the green. Uh, lots of other company results, though, for investors to digest. The company that owns Gucci, for example, the French luxury group Kering, their shares actually opening down 3.5% after their latest results. Uh, the news from the United States also helping to move markets in Asia. The Nikkei in Tokyo jumped by over 2.5% in trading today. Now, Japanese markets getting back to business after a holiday yesterday, so a bit of catch-up uh, playing into that gain. A little bit of optimism, too, over progress in the US-China trade talks bouncing around on the markets. We've got some gains in Shanghai as a result. This is the picture on the currency markets, a euro trading for $1 and just under 13 cents and just under 88 pence sterling. Let's turn next to uh, the latest results from Nissan. Lots of focus on the company, of course, since uh, Carlos Ghosn's arrest. It's not good news. The Japanese carmaker reporting a drop in net profits of 45% in the last nine months. The company also revising down its profit forecast for the full year. This was Nissan's first set of financial results since Carlos Ghosn was arrested last November on charges of financial misconduct. He's, of course, since been sacked as the company's chairman. Now then, here in Paris, it might be hard to believe, I found this pretty hard to believe, but uh, the city is hosting its first international wine fair. What a travesty that there hasn't exactly. been one before. I can't believe it. That we haven't been invited. Anyway, <laughs> this is an event that brings together professionals from around the globe. Strong emphasis, of course, on boosting French wine producers. There are similar events held elsewhere in the country, but this is the first time in Paris where nearly every major producer is represented. It comes at a time when French winemakers are facing increased competition from abroad. Georgina Robertson reports. France a country synonymous with gastronomic culture and the wine that goes with it. Wine producers feel that there was a need for a wine salon in the French capital to showcase the nation's savoir-faire and uncork the full potential of the international wine market. There's Vin Expo in Bordeaux and the message is very clear. There's Pro Vine in Germany, which is an international trade fair and very important. Paris, I think it was missing. For many reasons, France remains the land of Epicureanism. It's here that we want to find the good wines, the French wine. Though the event is aimed at professionals, the goal is to make the wine market more accessible for consumers. We are able to serve all market segments and consumer expectations, even the ultra-elite wines that are best known by collectors all over the world. But I think it's also important that a consumer who has $10 still buys French wine. In 2017, global wine exports were worth 26.5 billion euros. France accounts for a third of those exports, followed by Italy and Spain. But global wine consumption shows a different picture. Five countries drink over half of the world's wine, the United States consuming 14%, with France close behind drinking 12%. The wine market is increasingly competitive. European neighbours and New World wines all hoping for their slice of the camembert. Salon Wine Paris hopes to maintain France's position at the forefront of this shifting market. Georgina Robertson there. Now, finally, from Stephen, let's all sing along. Friends may not always be there for you. 
I know this is terribly sad news da, da, if you're someone that I'll oh, stop sorry <laughs> carry on <laughs> um, the hit sitcoms Rain on Netflix could be coming to an end uh, this year this after the head of Warner Media's new streaming service suggested that Warner Brothers uh, may take hit shows like Friends back from its rivals when their service gets up and running Kevin Riley said you can expect the crown jewels of Warner will ultimately end up on the new service now, Netflix reportedly paid $100 million last December to keep Friends on its platform. This video was part of the announcement that that deal had been signed. That deal expires, though, at the end of 2019. Other shows that could be affected by the new Warner streaming service include The Big Bang Theory and Riverdale. So if you're a Friends fan, watch out. They're watch all about now. 85 now, aren't they, most of There's the actors? There's so many of these episodes that I think I know off by heart at this stage. <laughs> oh, you know, that, that will do you. Yeah. OK, not, never been that much of a fan. But anyway, I'll leave that to Stephen. Thank you very much, Stephen, with Business on France 24.